I'm gonna show you what my patch schedule looks like. And this is something I'm actually a little bit proud of in my own OCD nerdy way. This is my, this is my patch. Uh, my patch is amazing. I love my patch. This patch is my patch. I separate everything all the time. I try and stay as organized as possible. Uh, as everybody who has ever patched a show in a Grand MA2 will tell you, it is annoying that Grand MA doesn't have a tree structure. I would love to have folders. I'd love to have a tree, some way of organizing more than just at the at the layer level. I'd love to have layers and sublayers, or or you know, it, some some kind of tree. But here's a way to get over that. We'll start from the bottom up because the bottom up is kind of how everything goes for me. So down at the bottom here, I've got a bunch of utilities. You can see I've got it here labeled utilities. And I just hit spacebar a few times to make it feel like you were hitting tab in Microsoft Word. Uh, if that's what you were looking at, you wanna be able to see a little bit more. So this kind of fakes the tree structure. So I've got an automation layer that's all in the 11,101s. Kind of depends on how that on what I've got going on, but right now in my show, there's a, or in the, in this file I'm working with, there's a single piece of automation. Fixture type storage. I don't have, like I, like I said before, I don't have, you don't usually have that many techs on the road. So I don't have a lot of time at my console. Usually I'm still building and, you know, getting crud under my fingers and chain grease and all the above. So what I do instead is at the, when I patch a show, I'll just add another fixture of that same type. As long as you keep a fixture of that fixture type in your show, patched or not patched, it'll hold all the presets. All the presets will maintain, everything will work. And you know, this is really just so I don't have to go through and make, you know, my 14 primary colors and screw around with the gobo wheel. Those are really the only two things that I, that really slow me down and it's not that it, it it's even slows me down that much, but it sure hel it's sure helpful. Um, so what I do is every day when I'm done getting my show ready, I go into F-Type storage and I add a fixture of every type I'm using that day. Again, I just give it a fixture ID that's the next in line in the 40,000s because we can have kind of as many fixture numbers as we, fixture IDs as we want. You know, the range is really, really big. So might as well, you know, build it that way. Uh, I tend to make this kind of thing. You can see here that I've got the fixture type and that's awesome, you can see the fixture type, but I actually changed the name of every fixture so that I can see what it is, who makes it, and then how many channels it has. Because not every time you can see what the DMX footprint is and sometimes you need to think about that. Additionally to that, as a lot of you guys know, particularly if you work with GLP or Roby fixtures, calling it 39 channel mode doesn't really get you anywhere because they have all kinds of silly names for their stuff. And they're still, they, you know, they're not silly, but they, they do make sense. And then same thing for elation as well. You know, they have, they'll have standard compressed extended. GLP is going to have a bunch of different stuff because their fixtures have a million modes. You know, even Martin sometimes does it. So I also put the name, you know, GLP X Farber 2034 channel normal. Um, so I've got a ton of every fixture of my show is here. Uh, we'll move up on the utilities thing. Dummy fixtures. Dummy fixtures are, for me, mean DMX remotes. Um, I use DMX remotes like crazy because they're awesome. And if you don't know the DMX remotes trick and how to use a, an inverted dimmer fixture to get a size master, which is not something that the MA2 naturally has in the right direction, it's a miracle. And I highly suggest you figure it out and then Hazen House, I keep in utilities because it's not part of the show. It's something different for me. I'm seeing it less and less as the shows get bigger and bigger that I work on, that I have DMX control of the house rig. You know, this is becoming less and less of a thing, but if I have a giant house rig, and I don't mean house rig, I mean like the house lights, the proscenium, the balcony, the hallways. I put all that stuff in utilities because I don't want it anywhere near the operating part of my show. I did a gig. I forget which 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 club it was, but I, I know it was somewhere in Texas. The house lights, the balcony lights, the bathroom, kitchen, and bar lights, and the outdoor lighting around the front of the venue were all on the same DMX line, or as part as I, as they made as part of I think it was the front of house uh, 
the front of house truss. It was all together. And so you have to put that in a new layer, non-dim patch, you know, all this stuff, make sure it's all on super max priority, turn off anything that can affect it because you go for a blackout and you bring your grandmaster down and then all of a sudden, uh, you know, you go for a blackout and then people in the bathroom start screaming. You do that once and then you learn. And you can't even really say it's your fault because you figure the people that designed the structure and designed the lighting system for the, for the building should know better. Um, but at the end of the day, you're the guy operating it and you're the guy who hit the button, so they, they point to you. Then I got a little blank space to separate. Uh, if you watch the stream with Jason, he'll, he'll tell you, he tell you this and it's really, really true. If you have a layer with nothing in it, you know, just a blank layer, it will go away if you PSR something into your show file. Um, if it's an empty layer, it disappears. So you got to put something in it. I've got a dummy fixture. I took a, uh, I took a standard, you know, single channel dimmer fixture. Uh, copied it, renamed it so I wouldn't screw up which one is which, and stripped it of all DMX properties of any kind. It doesn't do anything, it just goes bye-bye. Fun little MA trick, not one of the ones where you select groups of fixtures, but this is a little fun tip for you. If you build a new layer, let's say we want to go in this layer, and you want a blank layer like this. So you go to add layer, no name, blank, awesome, you don't do anything, you know how this works, you hit X and layer. Oh, it says layer. Well, that's really stupid. All of a sudden, layer doesn't get you anywhere. So you try and be clever and you go, oh, it must need some text in it. Oh, it's got to have something. I know what I'm going to do. Space bar. Single space bar. That'll, that'll trick it, right? Hey, uh, it, layer. Aw, oh, nope, can't do that. You got to have something besides a space bar. But what they don't tell you you can and can't do is have a lot of space bars and then some stuff. So when you're making a layer like this, Right click to name it and just hold that space bar down for a while. Spend some time, have a sip of coffee, do whatever you want to do, and then add anything. I use a little period, hit enter. Hey, now I've got a blank layer. And it's not a blank layer, it's, you know, all kinds of space bars and stuff, and then a period. Um, so if you expand out, you can see there they are. I got a little period here, a little period here, a little period here for all these blank spaces. And that is how I do it because I'm evil. I don't know what to tell you. Um, I prefer to see all that stuff. And I know it's a really stupid, silly little trick and it doesn't seem like it means much to you, but holy crap, it means stuff. Um, if you can stay organized, again, the more organized you are, the faster you are. The faster you are, the better your shows can be. If you can work fast on a show day, that means you have time to possibly go eat lunch or dinner. And food is important on tour because what's in the bus is usually chips and salsa. And chips and salsa can make you very, very fat. So now we'll move up to the clone rig. The clone rig is where all of the stuff I clone from in my shows goes. If you haven't dealt with this concept yet, or if you're just watching this in the replay, or if you're brand new to the MA, when you're programming a show, when it's not just your rig. So let's say you're, you know, you're not in an arena, you're not doing a stadium tour, you're not doing a corporate gig where you hang your light package. Let's say it's your show that you have a you have a floor package for and you are taking this into different venues across the country you know house of blueses theaters rock clubs you know all this stuff they all have lighting rigs built into the ceiling and sometimes you get to dictate a little bit of what, what's up there and most of the time you don't so you have to deal with what they have so the way to get around that is to program a much bigger show than you're ever gonna see. Um, I'll show you how many I have, but you program a really big show full of fake lights, stuff that you, you know, you're not gonna see in the real world or you might see in the real world. Like, you know, take the biggest one you know you're gonna see on any given tour, program that, and then you can do cloning to get into whatever house rig you're gonna see. Um, I'm not going to be getting into cloning in this video or in this uh, stream today. Talk to Jason Giaffo, watch his videos. He goes into very, very explicit detail about it. Um, I know I was there. 
My clone rig lives at the bottom of this structure here because it's one of the things I'm gonna see the least. I'm not really looking at my clone rig in a patch view day to day. Once you take these shows on the road, once you get, once you take these, once you're out and touring, you're gonna unpatch these fixtures because you don't want MA trying to request parameters for that. If you're patching a really big show, like in my case, I know I'm taking up 11 universes to make my house package. You know, you wanna unpatch that stuff. So I don't care about that guy. He stays down here. One thing I will say is everything I do gets numbered in a similar way. So anytime it's a, based on what it is here, in terms of your main numbers, whether it's the 10,000s, 20,000s, 30,000s, 40,000s, and then even the nothings, the 0,000s, they're all, they all work together in a similar way. My 100s are always spots. So for me, spots always are 101 through whatever I need. Beams are always 201 through whatever I need. Washes are 301, LEDs are 400, strobes are 500, you know, on and on down the line. And they work the same way, particularly between clone and house rig. Uh, with the tour package, the tour is gonna dictate what goes out there. Uh, I'm, I've got the house rig. The house rig is what I'm gonna be patching and cloning every day too. The tool rig is what am I taking on this particular tour? The clone rig is what have I pre-programmed in my software back at home in uh, in in the pretend land of uh, previous. And then I've got all my utilities here for all my hazers, my house lighting, you know, again, in the house, the front of house lighting, dummy fixtures, fixture type storage, cameras and automation and all that nonsense. So I'll pull in my spots. You can see I've got 32 of the Maverick Mark III spot. I'm deliberately not using Vipers because I'm very rarely gonna be running across uh, Gobo Wheel 3. And I'd rather have less information than more especially dealing with gobo wheels and nonsense. And also not everybody's got vipers, so I'm just trying to mess around and pick something different. So anyways, that's why I'm using the Maverick Mark III's and not vipers because reasons. Anyways, I've got 32 of those, eight on each truss. I have, I've run four trusses in my template show just in case I'm ever on a really big festival and I need to have that many fixtures. Uh, for beams, it's the exact same number. It is four trusses, eight beams per truss. I'm using the Mac Axiom Hybrid because it's one mode and I don't have to zoom it out. I don't have to change modes to zoom in and out, I, I should say. And it also has CMY, so it'll work well with a Sharpie, with a Super Sharpie. It'll work with a Mega Point. It'll work with whatever I need. Uh, moving on, wash. The wash, I'm using the R3 wash. Again, a Chave fixture in simple-ish mode. It's not multi-pixel, but it's a good basic wash fixture. And that's what I really wanted to see. LEDs, I'm using the Elation Paladin panels, which is their newest version of the Paladin. It's awesome. I don't see Solaris flares that much. I see these, and these are a little bit easier to make basic presets with. So that's why it's on my show file. Strobe, Atomic 4K LED. And even if I see Atomic 4K standards, the, the mode is the exact same as the LED. So I'm not concerned about crossover. The other thing with both of these fixtures is that I can treat the strobes and the LEDs separately. So in, in the event that I run across a rig that is uh, JDC ones, I can just clone the LED panels, the plate parts from the Paladins and the tubes I can clone from the uh, 4Ks and they will work great. Blinder, using the uh, Elation DTW Blinder 350IP. There's a lot of Elation on this rig. It's just cause I wanna make Chuck Dillingham happy. Hi Chuck, love you. DTW 350 Blinder in, in lieu of the WW2 or any two, two cell mole. Just a nice little truss blinder, hang them on every truss. You see that all the time on shows. Uh, front of house wash is not unusual at all. I've just got a bunch more of the R3 washes, a bunch more of the Mark 3s, and a bunch more of the uh, four, the uh, four by or two by two blinders, the uh, the, the little four dots. Uh, also the uh, IP rated DTW from Malaysia. And that's my uh, that's my festival patch, as it were. That's my clone rig. Not the best clone rig, but this one is mine. And I like my clone rig. My clone rig treats me well. <laughs>